I'd like to call this meeting of the Merrimack School District Budget Committee to order. I would ask that you please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance <coughs> to our country's flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a couple of housekeeping things we have to do here uh, before we get started. But uh, first of all, my name is Stanley Heinrich. I am the chairman of the Budget Committee. We are going to have a half hour work session. Then the work session will recess. Then we will go into the public hearing. Then when the public hearing is concluded, we will go back to our work session. At this time, and under RSA 91-A, colon 2, Roman numeral 3, I am declaring an emergency of the Merrimack School District Budget Committee because we do not have seven people present here, and this is the last night that we can sign, get the budget passed within the Budget Committee. This is allowed by state law. We are also allowed to use our, one of our members is on the phone with us. We were hoping for another one, but haven't heard from them yet. I have to go through um, getting her signed in and corrected. So if you're wondering, that's what we have to do for tonight. If it wasn't tonight and we had another night available, we wouldn't have to declare an emergency. Thank you. Carol. Yep. Okay. Your name for the record. Carol Lang. And where are you right now? Satellite Beach, Florida. Is there anybody with you? Just my cat, Ginger. Ah, yes, the Budget Committee cat. Thank yep. you very much. Also, all of our uh, votes are going to have to be done by a roll call vote. It takes a little longer, but that's the law in these situations. The first thing we're going to do tonight is we are going to review a petitioned warrant article that was submitted by over 25 registered voters who signed a petition. And briefly, I'm just going to tell you what it is, and then the petitioner will explain their reasons. Um, this is to raise and appropriate $125,000 for the primary purpose to raise the building known as the former Brentwood School site, the Red Building, and return it the site back to a usable condition with appropriate fill, compaction, and gravel or hard pack to allow for the temporary additional parking. <coughs> Further, to appoint the Merrimack School Board as agents to expend. I'd now like to introduce one of our budget committee members who took it upon themselves to get a petitioned warrant article for this, and that is Lee French. Lee, if you will briefly go over why you did what you did. Lee, can I ask you to hang on one sec? Sure. Can you ask Carol maybe to go off? Is she on her speakerphone? That may be why we're getting no, feedback. I, no, she's not. No, I'm not, a, I'm not on a speakerphone. That, that's some other interference that's within here. Okay. It's unusual, though, because this is the first time it's happened. I hear it, too. Go ahead, Lee. Uh, my reasoning for the petition warrant article is that the voters decided to purchase the Brentwood building about a year and a half ago. Um, the long and the short of it was that uh, the building was, in, was old and in need of costly code upgrades. Uh, so if there was an intention in the short term to use the building, the long range goal was to tear it down. Uh, it has remained vacant other than the police, Merrimack police, using it for active shooter training. Um, and although I hate to take this usage away from the police department, I don't believe it's fair that the taxpayers pay for it at a cost of almost $2,000 a month. 
Um, there was a master plan on uh, a Warren article to raise $85,000 to hire an engineer to help design a master plan for the high school. On the list of considerations are a potential upgrade to the facade, improving the flow of traffic, increasing the parking and siting for a potential new office building. Uh, there's already not enough parking for the students who currently overflow along Ogara Drive. The master plan study will guide us as how best to use this current properties we have. However, as this is a Warren article, it may take, it may or may not pass, uh, and it will likely take up to two or three years before the funding is approved and master plan implemented. Uh, each month costing you and I almost $2,000 for a vacant building, as well as eliminating any potential cost savings the school board believes there would be. Um, kind of jumping around here a little bit. Another potential plan was to shut off the utilities and board up the building. This would be considerably less costly, however, would leave the town much more susceptible to liability, having possession of a certified abandoned building. This would also not allow anyone to check on the internal condition of the building, which is not advisable. Uh, my Warren article requests that we raise the 125 now, remove the building, add fill spread gravel to temporarily alleviate the lack of parking issue, which many people see as the most immediate need. Um, that's about some of it. Questions from budget committee members? I'd just like to make a statement if I could. Go ahead, Caroline. Um, I am strongly in favor of this Warren article. I feel like it is very imprudent to continue spending roughly $23,000 a year for utilities for building that for educational purposes we're getting no use out of and the town police are getting minimal amount of use out of it. And it's going to be torn down anyway, and if we wait until this whole master plan comes down the road, by the time we're done at $23,000, probably spent more in utilities than the cost of destroying the building. So I see no point in leaving it until whenever this master plan gets done. I think it needs to be done as soon as possible to save further the cost of the building we're going to tear down anyway. That's about it. Thank you, Carol. Any other members mm -hmm. want to speak? Chuck? Uh, I have been in favor of this kind of um, efficiency in savings for some time now. I realize there has been much controversy back and forth between the school board and the school budget committee. But I think that the number of people serving on the budget committee and our continued majority support for the removal of the building stands starkly in contrast to any evidence that the school board has presented uh, to keep it upright. Um, I've also been given assurances um, that the town is fully willing to cooperate with the school board and the school district for the removal of that building. And they would be more than happy, for instance, to participate in rolling up their big 125 cubic yard uh, waste disposal trucks and having the school's contractor, whoever that may be, uh, load those trucks and the town would take them uh, directly to the landfill in New York. <coughs> uh, bypassing uh, uh, any need on the school department's uh, uh, side to have a separate contract for uh, transportation of uh, the uh, condemned debris. Um, there's absolutely no reason why uh, this can't be accomplished for something in the neighborhood of $100,000. So we have to realize that this is a budget and 125000 is a very reasonable amount that will fully cover accomplishing uh, what the petitioned warrant article calls for. Um, and yet at the same time, um, we've been given reasonable assurances from those who have engaged in these practices before that it is uh, more than sufficient uh, to accomplish what needs to be done. 
I certainly rise in support of the petitioned warrant article. I also rise in support of this article. The School Planning and Building Committee uh, looked at this building uh, when they were doing a study and found it to be absolutely useless. And it's not a safe building, and it will require more money than it's ever going to be worth to put it in any kind of condition. If we get rid of it, we can put extra parking up closer to the school as opposed to the mud hole down by the old tennis courts and at less of a cost. And then when the um, master plan gets completed, you know, it might change what it's going to be. Maybe they'll pave it over. Maybe they'll put a building on it. Who knows? But that's my reason for supporting it. Um, there was an attempt made last year. The budget committee added money into the budget to tear the building down. Um, the school board didn't like what we did. And they arranged to have it cut out of the budget. And now we wasted another $23,000 keeping that building there. Anything else from anybody else? Yes, Gillian. Um, I'm inclined to support this as well. I mean, just looking at the rough math, if we are to wait another two to three years, because as Matt has indicated, even after this master plan, if it passes and they do the master plan, there's no big rush to implement the findings. They want to take their time, they want to do it right, which is wonderful, but that could indicate another two to three years before I believe one of our bonds is paid off and then another five years before the last school bond is paid off before the district is actually <coughs> debt free. So presumably why would we take on another huge master plan debt within the next five years? Am I, am I correct, Andy? There's two bonds left. Mm -hmm. One gets paid off in the budget year we're talking about now, mm -hmm. and the other is three years after that. So it's a okay. little bit shorter than what you described. Okay. Um, but I can't see why we would want to take on another major project until we're fully debt free. Just that. So looking at it like that, if we're going to spend seventy to a hundred thousand dollars to maintain a building just to knock it down for another hundred thousand dollars, it seems like we're being penny wise and dollar poor at that point. Just it just doesn't seem logical to me. Gordon, did you have something you wanted to say? Andy, can you uh, offer some input on behalf of the school board as to why we shouldn't just do this now? So we've talked about this off and on, and I know that even the school board was split on this Warren article. Just to share, um, Lee presented the Warren article to the school board last night, and the school board did not recommend it, but the vote was three not in favor, one in favor, and one abstention. So it wasn't a complete wipeout for sure. I think the school board, to a person, believes that this building needs to be taken down. One of the reasons why it was it decided to delay for one more year was largely to help sort of reduce the overhead of the taxpayers this year because of other things that we were doing, especially around staff increase and things like that. Um, and also because the because we were finally looking at a master plan for the whole area, we wanted to at least go through the the initial design phase to just make sure what it is we're doing to have if the bond gets approved if the warrant articles gets approved for the master plan we can verify what we think is there in terms of the the land to make sure that when we tear it down there's no surprises um, so it doesn't cost more maybe than what we're figuring um, so there was a lot of rationale that the school board used to say we want to wait one more year we're, the plan of the school board by the way in our discussions is not to wait three or four years for the plan to come to fruition but rather to wait one more year to do this. And one of the driving factors that we used in our justification was the fact that the police department has used and may continue to use this in some fashion for active shooter training during the year while we let one more year occur. So that was the rationale that we used. Obviously, I, I know that people are against it. Um, for me personally, not representing the board, if this one article passes and the money comes, gets into the budget, I would support taking the action if it gets approved, but this lets the voters decide one way or the other. Because I know that the board and the 
budget committee have had differing viewpoints on this in the year. So that's, but the school board in general is three, three to one against this particular Warren article. I have one more question. What is the uh, effect of $125,000 or even $100,000? Um, is that what you said, Chuck? It might be 100000 if we had some help with moving debris and things. Matt, what does that affect on the uh, tax rate? Matt? I think oh, he's pulling it. Right? Three cents. Per thousand. Three cents. Any final comments? And just, just to be clear, the Warren article, it's not the 100000 It may end up costing 100000 We have to figure that out. But if this Warren article passes, the taxes will be raised by the full 125 to make sure that they're allocated, regardless of what it costs in the end. So. Final comments, anybody? Lee, would you like to make a motion for the school budget committee to recommend this Warren article? I would like to motion that the school board budget committee accept anybody this Warren article. French? Do I have a second? Second. Second by I'll Chuck second Carroll it. And by okay, whoever. Carol and Gillian. We've had our discussion. All those in favor of recommending this Warren article? Uh, we have to have a roll call vote. Mrs. Heinrich? And Mr. Snyder. Not in favor. Mrs. Savage. Yes. Mr. Mower. Yes. Mrs. Lang. Yes. Mr. Heinrich. Yes. Mr. Gualyumi. Yes. Mr. French. Yes. <laughs> Six one zero. Motion to recommend passes. Thank you very much. Stan, could you repeat for me what the vote count was? Six to one. Thank you. Is that correct, Mrs. Heinrich? Yes. Okay. We have ten minutes. Yeah, we got ten minutes. I think we're going to do the minutes right now. And what we are going to do after we come back from recess is vote on the other Warren articles. Is that agreeable, or would you rather vote on these Warren articles now? Do the minutes now. Give you the option. A point of order. There was a motion that was tabled last time. Do you want to close? We don't have to do anything with it. If it stays on the table, at the end of the meeting tonight, that thing dies. OK. I'm just. Wanted to be sure I knew the process you're going to follow. Yeah. Does anybody have a preference? Would you rather do the Warren articles or do the minutes right now? And we'll do the minutes later. But they got to get done tonight. Oh, oh, yeah, there is. All right, we'll do that one first. I move that the school district budget committee for the purposes of bringing to the public hearing the operating budget amount of $80,111,563. If this article is defeated, the default budget is $80,264,413. Do I have a second? We're just moving this to the public hearing. And then after the public hearing, we will make any adjustments possible. Agreeable to everybody? OK. Mrs. Heinrich, would you call a roll call, please? Mr. French. Present. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. 
Mr. Gualiumi? Yes. Mr. Heinrich? Yes. Mrs. Lang? Yes. Mr. Mower? Yes. Mrs. Savage? Yes. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Seven, zero, zero. Excuse me. Eight, seven. He, he voted yes. He did vote yes, okay. Thank you. So that will be going to the public hearing. We have a couple more minutes here. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, we're gonna stick with these. We'll do the minutes afterwards, it'll be easier. If you go to uh, Warrant Article 3, it's a special Warrant Article. It's for $150,000, not to exceed 10% of the unencumbered surplus on hand at the end of this fiscal year, and a transfer of that amount to the School District Capital Reserve Fund, previously established for the purpose of providing unanticipated emergency repairs in all school district facilities. Would someone like to make a motion to recommend this warrant article? Can I ask a question on this? But, well, why don't we do the, That's right. get the motion going and then we'll do the questions. You wanna make a motion to, you make a motion I'll to make recommend the motion or have a second? Second. Seconded by multiple people. Now, do you have a question or a comment? I was just curious. This is the fund we used for the bat uh, remediation, correct? I don't know who I'm asking. Among other, among other things, yeah. And at that point, did we, I'm just kind of curious just for, did we, was there an amount there that we used up and we're refilling it? Is there, what's the? Well, the remediation was a, a few years ago. So the school, there was a similar Warren article last year where the, where the voters approved putting money into it. So it's built back up. It was down to almost nothing, and now it's up to, I believe, 350000 Is that what it is today? So the all school right. board wanted to add additional to get it up to 500000 That's all I wanted to know. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, Mrs. Heinrich, would you call a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Lang. Yes. Yes. Mr. Heinrich. Yes. Mr. Mower. Yes. Mr. Schneider. Yes. Mr. Wallini. Yes. Thank you. That'll go on as recommended. Moving on. Warrant article number four, another special warrant article. This is to raise and appropriate $265,000 for the purpose of window replacement at Merrimack High School where the original windows to the 1970 edition have cracked seals, manual locking levers that do not work, and systems that are not operational. These are 50 year old windows. Do I have somebody to make a motion to recommend this warrant article? Move to recommend article Moved by one. Chuck. Do I have a second? Second by Gillian. Any discussion? I should say further discussion. Seeing none. Mrs. Heinrich, would you call a roll call vote, please? Yes. Yes. Mr. French. Yes. Mr. Heinrich. Yes. Mr. Savage. Yes. Mr. Wallini. Yes. Mr. Mower. Yes. Seven zero zero. Okay. Let's see if we can get this next one in. Well, I know. I'm gonna go to this one. Shall the district raise an appropriate 105 
$8,000 for the purpose of replacing the bleachers in the Smith Gym that are original to the James Mastercola Upper Elementary School and are not ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, compliant. Do I have a motion to recommend? Yes. Second. Second by Gillian. Any further discussion on this? Seeing none, Mrs. Heinrich? Yes. Mr. Yes. <clears throat> Mrs. Lang. Yes. Mr. Frank. Yes. Mr. Heinrich. Yes. Mr. Savage. Yes. Okay. Last one, and that'll put us just at about 7:30. This is to raise and appropriate $82,500 for the purpose of hiring, uh, for the purpose of hiring an engineer to collaborate with the public in the open community forums designed to develop a master plan study to include options of use of the Merrimack High School property along O'Gara Drive and focused on optimizing student parking and staff parking, promoting citizen safety, considering placement of office space, improving traffic flow, analyzing, optimizing field space, resulting in the selection of a community-driven comprehensive plan for the reconfiguration and redesign of this site. Do I have a motion to recommend? Move to recommend. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Motion, second, yeah. Chuck. Chuck. Excuse me. We're in the middle of a vote, Anthony. I'll call you back. I no, I, I have to do it on another machine. I'll call you in a couple. Okay, go. Oh, you wanted to speak to it. I'm sorry, Chuck. I'm disappointed that the school board did not fold this into their operating budget. It's a relatively small amount of money to be absorbed into the operating budget, and it is clearly an operating budget purpose and in fact, it's probably one of the most important undertakings that the school district has proposed in some time. This uh, engineering plan is fundamental to the continued growth and development of the school district and the support of the maintenance of the school district and gives us our very first look at our entire campus inventory. I'm old enough that I've accumulated a little bit in my life and I don't know where most of it is. And I hope that I can get it straightened out before <laughs> I manage to pass on. It's, it's a mess when things are not organized. And our school district has grown like Topsy over the years. And I've been a first-hand witness to all of that and a participant. And it's simply time for us to organize our fundamental property plan to know where all of our utilities are, where all of our buildings are, to complete and close the engineered survey of those properties and establish a clean slate from which we can proceed to develop our properties, utilize our properties, and maintain our properties. I think this is absolutely critical uh, for the school district to undertake 
and I rise in support of the article. Thank you, Chuck. Anybody else? Mrs. Heinrich, would you call a roll call vote, please? Yes. Mrs. Lang. Yes. Mr. Guadalupe. Yes. Mr. Muller. Yes. Mrs. French. Yes. Mrs. Savage. Yes. Mrs. Schneider. Yes. We have done recommending the special warrant articles. At this time, um, we're going to stop for a minute before I open up the public hearing. I have to get on the phone to get a hold of one of our other members who finally was able to call in and can now start participating. And hopefully this will work. person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. That's great. Check his number. Here's the number he gave me. 254-702-5234. Hold on, folks. Hi, Andy. I just tried calling your number and got some crazy things. I said the mailbox wasn't set up yet. So you're in this number, right? Okay, I will try you again with this VoIP phone. Thank you. Bye-bye. This is Andy. Okay, we got you. Andy, I have to ask Perfect. you some I have to ask you some questions uh, before we get yes, started. Yes, sir. First of all is your name. Anthony Hunter. Okay. And where are you right now? I'm at Detroit International Airport. And is there anybody with you? A couple thousand people. Okay, so we're popular. Yes. I do hope that. Uh, Carol, are you still there? Hello, Carol. Hi. Hmm. Where did Carol go? She, she said hi. It was, it was barely audible, but there was a hi there. Okay, we'll hope she can hear. All right. I'm going to try this. Carol? Doesn't show her number. I did hit my number. Conference. Okay. It's not working. Andy, I might have to disconnect you here and start over again. And call. All right. 
Carol, are you there? Telephone number six zero three six seven zero. Telephone number six zero three. Apologize for this. This thing is crazy sometimes. There's a rhythm back out of that now. Can we keep our time though? Can we not be rushed for with the public? I'm not gonna rush anybody. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Don't worry about that. Hi there. We've been trying to get you back online on that 670 number and it keeps answering something crazy. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, get off the line and hang up. I'm going to call you back, okay? Okay. Bye. <coughs> First call. Second call. Call. Hello. Okay. Stay right there. Yep. Hi there. Now we Hello. Just, we just got to get Carol back online. Please turn right. Okay, I'll stand by.
Okay. I don't know. Andy, I'm, you, I'm here. You are here. How about Andy? I'm here. Okay. We finally got you. Um, we answered all the crazy questions we had. We are now going to open the public hearing on the Merrimack School District uh, budget. Ann, can I interrupt you for one second? Don't you have to go through the procedural questions with Andy? I already did. Okay, fine. I did it before. You were, okay. on, you were on hold. Okay. Um, is the budget committee's task to go over the operating budget and make a recommendation after visiting with department heads um, all over the school district. Then they come and do a presentation in front of the budget committee. And then we look at what the school board would like and decide if we feel that's a good and prudent expenditure. Now, just to let you know, Articles 1 and 2 have no money in them. We don't discuss those at all. These special warrant articles that we voted on earlier, we can vote to recommend or not recommend. We cannot change anything in the warrant article at the budget committee level. So the first one with money is a warrant article for $150,000 of unincorporated surplus funds from the end of this fiscal year and to transfer it to the capital repair, capital reserve, school district repair, capital reserve account previously established. This gives the school board money for emergency repairs, like the bats, like a hurricane that blew a roof off, like a boiler that could blow, it's very old, things along that nature. The budget committee was unanimous in supporting, recommending this warrant article. Does anybody have any questions about this warrant article? Seeing none, we will move on. Oh yes, if you do want to speak, please come up to the table and remember to say your first and last name and please spell your last name and your address. Thank you. The next warrant article is to raise an appropriate $265,000 for the purposes of window replacement at Merrimack High School that were built in 1970. That are cracked, blocks don't work, frames are falling apart. The budget committee voted 7-0 to recommend this warrant article. Does anybody have any questions on this warrant article? Scott Adler, 3 Deerwood Drive. Mr. Heinrich, did you say that the windows are cracked? Cracked seals. Oh, cracked seals, but the windows themselves are not cracked. Is that correct? Uh, I couldn't tell you that. I imagine, I don't think they are, but who knows? So is it my understanding that you're voting on something that you don't have all of the knowledge on? I have plenty of the knowledge. Okay, so okay. are the windows cracked? This is going to end real quick. Sure. Hey, this is this is this is public time. I can't tell you if there's every window cracked. And what's on the you side. you stated that the windows were cracked. I'm asking, are the windows cracked, right, or is okay, there something fine. else? I'll read the damn thing verbatim. Sounds good. Very professional okay. of you. Window replacements originally 1970 had cracked seals, manual locking systems that are not operational. Thank you. So the windows themselves are not cracked. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. Any other questions? 
Seeing none, we will move on. Oh, Gillian, I'm sorry. I also just wanted to add, it's not in the warrant article, but it was discussed at our previous meetings that this also includes abatement of the asbestos that is in the windows. In the caulking. In the caulking seals. Hey, Stan, I, I do have a question. Okay, go ahead. Andy hey, Hunter. I, I probably... I probably know the answer to this, but it is, is it too late to put my vote on record? For what? Yes, oh, For it is these warrant articles that we're talking about. We've okay, already thank recommended you. them. Yep, understand. Any other questions, comments? Moving on. See if the district will raise and appropriate the sum of $82,500 for the purpose of hiring an engineer to collaborate the public and in the open community forums designed to develop a master plan study to include a series of options for use at Merrimack High School property and school district property along O'Gara Drive focused on optimizing student and staff parking, promoting citizen safety, considering placement of office space, improving traffic flow, analyzing, optimizing field space, resulting in the selection of a community-driven comprehensive plan for the reconfiguration, redesign of this site. Any questions? Moving right along. The next Warren article. Shall the district raise and appropriate the sum of $105,000 for the purpose of replacing the bleachers in the Smith Gym that are original to the James Mastricola Upper Elementary School and are not ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, compliant? Any questions on this Warren article? And Article 8, shall the district vote to raise and appropriate a sum of $125,000 for the primary purpose to raise the building known as the former Brentwood School, a.k.a. the Red Building, and to return the site back to a usable condition with appropriate fill, compaction, and spread gravel to allow for the temporary additional parking. Further to appoint the school board as agents to expend. Any questions on that warrant article? Okay. We will now move on to the operating budget. The budget committee has bottom line authority on the dollar amount that's proven. We do give guidance and direction to the school board if we think more money or less money may be needed. What we do not get involved in is how many teachers are they going to hire? How many trucks are they going to buy? That's up to them. They get the money. We say it's okay. And this warrant article currently sits at $80,111,563. If this did not pass or be defeated, the default budget would be $80,264,413. And this amount is made for from a, by a formula that the state has come up with and our assistant superintendent of business has to follow by the letter. We have no say in that default amount. And before I go into the operating budget, is there anybody that has questions about the default budget? Because 
Matt Chevenel will be more than happy to try and answer them for you. Please come up to the mic, state your name and address. So my name is Henry Trujillo. I live at 6 Dumas Lane in Merrimack. And before I ask my question, I want to say that I want to thank you for your time, the effort that you guys dedicate to this board and the, uh, and the budget committee. So my question is, is that uh, on the default budget, the original default budget was, or the original budget was $85 million, correct? I do not know that figure. I am given this figure. It actually probably was about that. So you asked the original def <clears throat> default budget or the original proposed budget? The original, I'm, I'm sorry, the original proposed budget was $85 million. No, it was $81,110,000, give or take. Yeah, correct. So we cut a million dollars out of that, bu uh, that, pro that proposed well, budget? Well, we're talking only about the default budget, which was calculated. Originally, default budget was 80 million, I'll tell you exactly, yeah. 80 million, 714,517. We found through recalculation of health care that we could drop that by 450,000 and some change. So the new default budget is what's in here of 80264413 So the default budget, which we're talking about now, dropped by a little over 450000 So one of my questions is, has the default budget ever gone down year on year? No. So it's never gone down. It's always gone up. And based on some of the calculations from the concerned citizens, our budget's going to be close to $100 million in a couple of, you know, two or three, maybe four years. Right. So there's never consideration on reducing the default budget? Is it just based on a raw calculation? It's in the RSAs and it's a <coughs> calculation. If I'm sorry, what's an RSA? Oh, it's a State law. law. State law. State law, thank law. you. Yeah. Okay. And so what you do is you take last year's approved budget and you start off at that number and then you put in contractual obligations uh, such as the teacher's contract that was approved, the support staff contract that was approved, uh, associated benefits that go with those contracts. Uh, you take out uh, one-time items or items that were special warrant articles, like we subtracted it out, 325000 for the Master Cola Elementary School parking lot, uh, 467000 was a deduct, uh, there was a Honeywell lease that we had. We had a multi-year lease agreement that expired, so we took that out of the, op the default budget. Uh, we had a transfer to capital reserve, which was a special warrant article, which we reduced the operating bu the default budget by. We took that out of the default budget. So, so those are when you say you those took are, it. So I'm sorry, Matt. I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, I just I just want to. Like I said, we're taking last year's budget that was approved, right? and then I'm rolling through the items that we deducted from last year's budget. So but I it, gave you the ads. Right. I'm, I'm just about done with the subtracts. Okay. And you can, you can, you can go now. Right. So yeah. I, I guess what I'm trying to see is that, is that an elimination of those amounts, or are they shifted no. you know, somewhere else? So it's, a, it's, a, it's a subtraction. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess my concern is, as a citizen, right, is that I've lived in this town for 10 years, right? And there was talk at the board that student populations went down at a certain time. And I was just wondering why the cost kept going up. And I'm just concerned that when we've got a budget that's around $81 million, right, for a population count that we have, it just seems excessive. I understand that we provide great care and great instruction to our kids, but I would hope that the board and the budget committee thinks about the taxpayers every time that you deliberate. Because I, I know that I'm paying a lot of taxes, and there are a lot of people out there that just, you know, they're blind to this. They don't know, but they need to know, you know. So just the consideration, you know, I just, I'm surprised that it's never gone down. That is surprising. Andy Schneider. So <clears throat> the default budget is sort of an odd one because 
you'll almost, unless you do something to your, your previous budget where you cut something major out, it's always going to creep because you always have increase in health care, increase in, in salaries, increase in transportation. Those are the things that Matt described. You've got a base from last year, and the default budget says you don't do anything new. You take everything you spent that was one time, you cut it out. But then you add in all these contractual obligations. In the time I've been on the school board and the budget committee for 13 or so years, those numbers always make it higher than it was the year before. Right. And what the school board has tried to do is take what we want to spend through attrition of teachers or, or bringing in a younger teachers or other things to make the operating budget never grow the same way the default budget was. I think only one time in the last five years has it gone has the proposed budget been high? But it's never been flat, right? I mean, has it ever it, been the, flat? No. It, it's the, at, the, it's the default in, budget is almost never flat. In, in simply less, because of the way it's calculated. Yeah, unless, if you're talking the same number of staff, then the default budget by virtue of labor contracts and health insurance, health insurance has never gone down. It went up 8.4% this year. Went up, that's not my fault. It went up 13.7 uh, the year prior. It went up 9.9 percent the year before that. It went up 3.4 percent the year before that. So those costs have always increased. Yeah. So Matt, do you ask? I mean, well, I'm not putting it on you, but does the board ask why they're going up? Is it just? Oh, absolutely. Is it? You know, do we do we negotiate? Do we argue? Do we, you know, do we push back? You know. We, we get a, uh, a report from the Health Trust. That's where we get our insurance. That's where the town of Merrimack gets their insurance. Sure. That's where most municipalities and schools buys it. It's a, it's a trust, basically. And they buy it from, from Anthem in bulk. We're, I don't know how many subscribers in the state of New Hampshire. And we do get an accounting of why it has gone up. And it's basically claims driven. It's so if you had a year with some bad claims, right. sometimes we have those, you will get hit with a, a higher rate increase. It's only been, I think, stable for one time. As far as um, challenging that, yeah, we challenge that. We, we ask them to show us the, the numbers and why, definitely. But uh, And I don't mean to make your jobs harder, I just, you know, I get the impression that it's just been the same way for so long that it's just, you know, yeah, let's just go with this, right? And I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not pointing a finger at anybody. But I just, you know, see my taxes going up year on year, and it's frustrating, right? So I'm going to start showing up in the meetings and Good. asking why, you know? Good. That's it. But thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Last name, T-R-U-J-I-L-L-O. And do you need my address again? Or are you good? Do my address. Yes. T-R-U-J-I-L-L-O. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Um, yeah, he, he can sit down while I ask. Go ahead, Chuck. Yes, the, uh, the, the former... Uh, Individual Henry, I think was your name. Yes, I'll come back here. Yeah, uh, you should know by way of where your where your tax money goes. The school district is required to return any surplus to the town to reduce taxes. Uh, we can't we can't overspend the budget. We can only underspend the budget. And when you're dealing with a very large budget, you have to have careful management to make sure that you don't exceed somehow. And so regularly, we return about $3 million through careful management of the budget, because it is a budget, to the town to reduce taxes. The selectmen are then, or excuse me, the town council, uh, is able to take those funds uh, and incorporate them with other revenues that they possess that we do not and keep the tax rate stable. 
otherwise, uh, you would have huge uh, lifts and dips in your tax rate, and you'd be driven crazy by it. Uh, so it's, it's actually the town council that stabilizes your tax rate year by year by year so that you have a smooth experience in your taxes. Chuck, don't take this the wrong way, but I'm being driven crazy by it, right? I just, you know, it's, I mean, I talk to my neighbors and, you know, their taxes are all going up, right? And we talk about this and, you know, we don't do anything about it, but it's, you know, we've got to talk about it, address it, you know, and bring it, you know, caucus about it because I think, you know, our taxes are going up. Well, we I want to why. assure you that I don't know anybody, and I've lived here a very <laughs> long time. I don't know anybody that isn't concerned about their taxes. Right. Uh, it's just the way of the world here. This is how it's gone. And the property tax is what we pay for the price of civilization, and it's the ante into the game. If you do not want to pay property taxes, then you just don't own property. That's the, that is the realistic thing about living in New Hampshire. I understand. Thank you. Stan, may I say something? Go ahead, Carol. Um, I just want to point out, and when you look at these in dollar numbers, the numbers seem huge, but when you actually break it down percentage-wise, the proposed operating budget is 2.6% higher than last year's. Right now, inflation is running at two point something percent. I don't recall this fractional part, but two point something percent. So I suspect homeowners are probably finding their household bills are going up two point something percent yearly also. It's not realistic to expect the school district not to have inflationary costs. And the other factor is that when we had a decrease in students a few years ago, we also cut, I believe it was 8% of our teachers at the same time. Unfortunately, when you have a decrease in students, you can't cut your infrastructure costs for the most part. I mean, you've, you've got a school, you can't just lob off a piece of it and things like that. So a lot of your fixed costs are what they are. But as far as teachers, we did try to address it. And sometimes when you both gain or lose students, you don't lose entire classrooms. So you don't always have the ability to cut a teacher just because you lost a couple of students. So it depends on where that rise falls. And right now we're starting to increase a significant increase in students. So we seem to be back on the other side of the curve again. And that's it. Dan, I would I would like to make a comment. Go ahead, Andy Hutton. So we'll I know two point six percent doesn't two point six percent doesn't sound like a lot, but if you look at the Social Security cost of living increase this year, it was one point six percent. So as we continue to have these three percent increases in the school budget year after year, for our seniors that are living in our community, we're eroding their fixed income. And that should be a concern of everybody's because not only do we look at a community, a healthy community of having young people, middle-aged people, but a healthy community also has senior people. And the last thing we want to do is create a tax situation where we're running senior people out of our community. All set? I am. Thank you. Okay. Could, could I just make one clarification? Yes, ma Because there was a percentage thrown around, and that percentage was before the school board reductions. Right now, last year's budget was $79,034,477. This year's request is $80,111,563. That's an increase of a $1,077,000. That's a 1.36 percent increase. So the operating budget, apples to apples, is a 1.36 percent increase, which is around 30 cents on your tax rate. Now, if you want a 1.36 percent increase in your property taxes, 
you'll vote for the operating budget and you'll stop there. That's why you have the option of these Warren articles. If you feel, if you, as a voter, feel strongly on one or the other, you can vote for them. Or if you feel like 1.36 is, that's all we want to do, um, then you don't vote for any of them. So that's what the option is. But right now, looking at the budget warrant article, it's a 1.36% increase, which is 30 cents on the rate. All set, Andy? Um, well, my comment to that is it's kind of hard to hear, Matt, but my comment to that is understand it. It seems like it's that percentage of an increase, but I think most of the cuts this year, and some of it was due to recent technology of being able to estimate uh, health care costs, the, of the cuts, most of the cuts were made to what would have been surplus in the budget. So if we took the million dollars in cuts that the school board made, uh, roughly, I'm, I'm off the top of my head because I'm standing in the airport and I don't have the numbers in front of me, somewhere 60 to 75 percent of those cuts were money that would have went to surplus. This year, that will not go to surplus because it was cut out of the budget. So while it seems like it's only a 1.3 percent increase in the operating budget, at the end of the year, we're going to have less of a surplus. So therefore, the actual increase percentage-wise to the budget is going to be greater than 1.3 percent. Well, if so, again, I go back to my comment. I'm concerned about the seniors in our community. That's well, all I have. If, okay. if I could just go ahead say one last thing: um, the 450,000 for the health insurance. You're right. That that would be a decrease in any surplus that we, we'd have to return to return to reduce taxes. But the other cuts were the windows at MHS for 265 the Brentwood demo for 125000 the master plan study, and a charter school bus and some uh, transportation for Voc Ed for around $60,000. So, so the big items were basically the windows, Brentwood, the ma and the master plan, too. So there were some real cuts, and they were taken from the operating budget, and they were moved into warrant articles to give people a choice. But you're right in that. The 450,000 uh, from health insurance, that's something that would have been added to the surplus and then just given back to the taxpayers to reduce as, the tax As well bill. as the transportation cost? Yeah, that's correct, too. We're taking a gamble on that one, that our voc-ed transportation is going to come in a little bit less than uh, previous. See, because it's, it's a variable because it depends how many kids sign up for what classes where and how many runs you make in a Nashua North, Nashua South, Alvern, all over the place. So we'll look, we looked at past history and saw we had an opportunity to shave that down a little bit. So that's why the voc ed uh, transportation line got, got cut. I'm good, Stan. Okay. okay. I'm fine. Hi. Hi there. Please introduce yourself. Sure. Paul Lagasse, 6 Brewster Street in Merrimack. Okay. And I'm up here for the same reason other folks are up here. My taxes have been going out of, out of sight every single year. I've lived here for eight years. I have an additional $2,000 on my tax bill from eight years ago. That concerned me. So I looked into it. 66% of that is the schools. That's what I'm contributing to the schools. And when I look at the default budget, and I listen to what folks are saying here on the default budget. One of the problems I see is the default budget takes what you budgeted, not what you actually expended, and then adds to what you budgeted. So if you lose a number of students in a given year and have to decrease staff, then you're not going to use the default budget with the decreased staff, because that was the default budget based on the original budget, which had the staff there. And on top of that, we have lost 529 students over eight years. We have not decreased staff. If we had kept up with that, we would have 66 less staff right now than we had in 2012. And those are the numbers. So I'm concerned because we're taking a, a budget, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong about this. Yeah, this one point. OK. Yeah. Go ahead. I'd, I'd like to hear it first, I guess. Oh, sure. All right. <laughs> um, 
The default budget calculation, the law changed a couple of years ago. Okay. I've given seminars on this in front of the School Boards Association around three or four times. And then a couple of years ago, the law changed. So let's say we had a reduction in enrollment, which it's not going that way this year. Uh, but, um, and we reduced our proposed budget by four staff members. Mm -hmm. You load them up with benefits, everything like that, maybe you're talking $100,000 a person, right? I would have to take those four staff members out of the default budget. So what you said about having the benefit of having extra staff in there, that changed in the law around two years ago. Two years ago. Yes. Okay, so up until then, up until then we were continuing to add. You could, yes. And, and my numbers right now from the state indicate that you're probably down six staff from 2011. Now, that doesn't equate to 500 students. So I'll leave it at that. Um, I'm just very disappointed that we can't get under control the budget in this town, and I do agree that we're probably going to drive out the elderly. Go ahead. Uh, did, did we have a discussion about what the actual number of, of teachers that have been lost over that similar time frame? And wasn't the number somewhere in the 45? Well, if, if, we, if, we go, if we go back to around the time the middle school was built, that was the high point. Uh, it was almost 5,000 kids. Uh, but if you go back to 2010, looking at the numbers, uh, let's just support staff and, every, and custodians and food service and all those people have remained the same. Um, teachers have gone from, in 2010, 2011, 366, and now we're asking for four additional teachers which will bring us to 344. So we're actually 22 teachers less than we were in 2010, 2011. I know what it says on the DOE website and the number of teachers, we've never had 310 teachers. That number is exceedingly low. So I'm not sure how the information gets collated or fed or whatever. But you can go online and you can look at a 2010, 11, or 11, 12 budget. And in the 11, 12 budget, and if you look at the personnel sheets, you can see for 2010, 2011, there's a page in there, and it's been posted up for a while now, that says 366 teachers. So that's what we had in 2010, okay. 2011. I'm not sure about what the enrollment was there, but it was, it was higher than what it is now. But we've gone down 22 teachers since that time. That's just our reality. Okay, we? Yep, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Hi, uh, I'm Matt Young. Uh, I live over on uh, Babusik Lake Road. And um, I will disagree with Mr. Chuck Mower in that you've never met somebody not concerned about their taxes. This guy, I'm not very concerned about my taxes. Um, I think you guys are doing all right. Uh, I wanted to say that I, th I think there's a lot of angry voices uh, over on the left there. And um, I just kind of wanted to speak up in some dissent here. Uh, I, I think that education is probably the most valuable thing we can do for our town um, and our society. I think that's the best use of our tax dollars. And it sounds to me like uh, you guys are kind of keeping a lid on uh, things getting out of control. Um, so I would like to caution this committee to uh, not be too reactive to the angry loud voices that have come so far. Thank you for your comments. Uh, I would like to point out that 
it is not the budget committee's job to just cut the budget. If you read RSA 32, it clearly says you have to look out for the prudent expenditures. That means sometimes you got to spend money. And the unfortunate part is that it costs a lot of money to run a school. It costs a lot of money to keep these places looking up and not dingy and dirty like some school districts are. And while higher taxes are not anything anybody appreciates, if we get more industry in town, that helps our tax rate somewhat. But that's up to the folks on the town side to do that. But rest assured, uh, the Budget Committee looks at these, this operating budget. They visit with the people, as I said. We've been doing it for a number of years. And the school administration and all of the staff at the schools have come to know what we look for, what we like, what we don't like, what's reasonable. Please remember that, what's reasonable. Now, is there anybody else who wants to make a comment on the operating budget? My name is Lori Peters, P-E-T-E-R-S. I live at 7 Newton Street. I just kind of have a procedural question, getting familiar with the budget committee and getting familiar with the way the school board works. I've been on a number of nonprofits, boards, and um, Generally speaking, department heads make budget recommendations. Usually the head executive director takes that to the budget committee, but the, in the nonprofits I've worked with before, the budget committee could look at line item things, and, and as you stated earlier, if, I, if I'm wrong, please correct me, that you can only decide on a bottom line number. What, what ends up happening is that, and I'm gonna use just a far out example. Uh, somebody had in, $1,000 for tiddlywinks. And somebody thought they only needed 500. We can make that recommendation to cut that $500. But when the cut shows up on the budget itself, it comes off the bottom line. So the, the, the board can overrule that it's, it's, not a case of, it's not a case of overrule. It's the ultimate decision of the school board to decide where the money is going to get spent. So the my question with that is just so that I can understand, is that governed by an RSA? Yes, it is. Okay. That's what they I... Have the, they have the ability to transfer money between accounts. Where they don't have the ability to do that is in these special warrant articles, right. it can only be spent for that purpose. So the budget, the budget committee doesn't have a line item veto no. kind of authority? It's not a line item. Years ago, there were moves made to try and zero out things, but it was totally counterproductive, and it didn't work. Okay, you answered my question, thank you. Thank you. And before I ask, before you speak, yes, sir. is there anyone else that has not spoken yet? Come on up, sir. Robbie Reisman, um, 8 Iris Drive, Merrimack. Um, mine is more a statement than a question. Okay. Um, it's more the, my understanding is so what Mr. Legassi was raising is uh, some legitimate concerns about the squeeze on seniors in terms of the cost of living. But I think what I'm seeing is a larger factor in that, aside from individual school budgets, are things like the, the, the rise in the general cost of living and inflation and sort of the discrepancy between that and the increase in wages and in income in general. Now, the Social Security increase is an issue if it's only 1.8%, but that doesn't change the fact that the inflation costs. Can't even get a coffee costs. at Starbucks. 
What's that? You can't even get a coffee with that at Starbucks. Exactly. So, yeah, so I said I don't particularly have any issue with the way the budget is being calculated. I don't have any, any problems with that. It's just more that I think that this is, speaks to larger structural issues. Thank you. Thank you. Young lady. Hi, I'm Jenna Reynolds, R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S. I'm from 22 Valley View Drive in Merrimack. Uh, I just wanted to share a similar perspective and say that I think our schools are doing a wonderful job and it's important to keep an eye on what we are drawing to our town as well. I moved here for our schools. We were in Manchester and after having children decided that we wanted something different for our family looked around and decided that Merrimack was a right fit for our family. I know many of my friends are in a similar situation. We think the services provided by this school are appropriate and exceptional, and that the taxes we pay have been also appropriate. Uh, I pay high taxes. We came to a nice neighborhood here, and we are very happy. Uh, I think it's important to keep drawing in these families as well, uh, so that we can happily support our town and hopefully also still have room for our seniors. <clears throat> I'm also a teacher in a neighboring district, so I have another perspective on the education system, uh, and I think on that side, we're doing great as well. It's not always easy to look at the numbers when you're looking at budgets and saying, well, why haven't we eliminated 66 teachers? It's not that easy. It costs a lot of money to get quality teachers into your district. We want to draw in some of the best teachers, and sometimes that costs money to do that. Uh, it also costs money to find new teachers. If we have a lull in enrollment, but know we have more coming up through the elementary school, it costs a lot of money to seek out new hires down the road. So I think we need to be careful and look at the bigger picture when we're looking at these numbers. Um, and again, thank you for the work you do and the consideration you put into all this. Thank you very much. I'm going one last time, if anybody hasn't spoken. All right, at this time. Oh yes, I'm sorry, I apologize. That's part of it. So Mr. Heinrich, there was a, a question that was answered, or a question that was answered concerning the shifting of funds, right? I guess- Transferring of funds, Transferring yes. of funds. Who has oversight on those transfers? Well, the school board has the ultimate um, job to transfer the funds, usually made at a recommendation by the assistant superintendent for business and the superintendent. And where is the transparency in that process with the town? With the town? Yeah, I mean, in other words, so with the population, if you give them $81 million yeah. and they shift the funds, how is that, a, it, you know, and we understand what the budget is, but you're saying that they can shift the funds at will, right? Well, they, they, they can. That's not to say that they do. <laughs> you're insinuating that they do. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the, the you know, if, if a budget line's going to be over and you've got another budget line that's way under, Take it and balance it out because we cannot overspend right. the money we were given. But we don't, we don't have the ability to look at line item, right? But you don't need to look at every bus that's going to Alvern to bring Votex students. Right. That's something that the school board does and the administration does so that if we need a little extra money to get more students to their program at another school, they can do that and take right. it out of somewhere else in the budget. Right. But the way in which you're asking the question is insinuating that that's, uh, that's a no, bad thing saying, or that there's no transparency in that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying who has oversight. That's what I'm asking. Could I, well, could here I you go. Could I, yeah, help, could I help with that? Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah, the, the school board has oversight to transfer money from this line item to that line item. And it's done at a school board meeting in public session. Oh, so it is declared? Okay, that's it. You've yes. answered my question. We haven't done that because we like to show the overage, overages where they are and the underages where they are so we can try and hit the mark better next year. But if, let's say, per se, 
I knew I was going to have a surplus in one line item, and I let's let's I don't even want to say this, but let's say there's some bats in the building, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll go through that again, right? I learned a lot about bats, I'll tell you. So, and then we wanted to transfer money to cover that cost from another account in you the budget. You have the ability to do that. The board would yeah. have the ability to do that, and they would do that at a public session. Gotcha. In front of everybody. But then it doesn't show the overexpenditure in the maintenance line that we use to cover the cost of the bats. So, you know, it's just different styles, that's all. Thank you. Yep. The other thing I'd like to point out is they get audited by a very good group of tax auditors yeah, every year. Yeah, reputable, Greg Snakes. Thank you. Um, I, when I finished up, I was going to give you your 10 minutes for your presentation. Oh, okay, that's fine. Come on down. I didn't know I was going to get a chance to do it, but that's okay. Yeah, that's so. why we got the screen up and the oh, video equipment. Oh, if you want me to do it, I'd be more than happy to. Yeah. Well, I don't think we and you need got to ten because minutes, I've, done, I've done most of it. You got your so well, if I you've done most of it, that's yeah, good. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so I guess my one thing is I appreciate the woman who said she came to live here. I forget who it was uh, because I appreciate living here as well. I think Bedford is just as nice of a community as ours, don't you? Wouldn't you agree? No. You wouldn't agree? No. So you wouldn't agree that Bedford is always in the top 10 of all the school rankings, whereas we are 28th or below in every one of them, and Bedford does it for 13.9. We do it for 16.7. So, and those numbers come straight from Matt, because he gave those numbers yesterday. Sir, yet. I need you to be addressing the Budget Committee. Oh, I'm sorry. And I would also remind you, you're talking about things the Budget Committee has nothing to do with. You have nothing to do with the budget? No, we have the but to do with the budget, but not school rankings and that stuff. That's not, we can't control that. We can't control how many teachers are hired or fired. And who controls that? The school board. So the school board should take notice that they spend $2,000 or $10 million of our money more than Bedford does and rank less. Thank you. Okay. At this point in time, I am going to close the public hearing. And if you want to stay and see us do our thing for the rest of the night, you're more than welcome. I thank you for showing up. Please be careful on your way home. The driving's a little bit tricky. And remember, Go out and vote. You don't vote, you can't complain. And with that, I am going to start this off. I move the Merrimack School District School Committee recommend an operating budget of $80,111,563. Should this article be defeated, the default budget will be $80,264,413. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Mower. We've been through a lot of hours. Um, if people have reasonable concerns about adjustments they want to make, now is the final time to do it. If not, we will vote on whether to recommend this operating budget. Does anybody have any comments on the board? Stan, this is Andy. Yes. I will say I have the same concerns that I voiced during our budget committees, but I will support this. But that doesn't mean that I don't have the same concerns that I voiced earlier. Okay. Carol? Um, no, I don't, I, do, 
I'm not sure if this is the right time to say this. I'll say it. Feel free to cut me off if it's too off topic. I'm concerned. I, I'm supporting this budget, definitely. I'm concerned that there seems to be a perception out there that people's taxes are being raised without a change in the tax rate and that it's because of manipulation of assessed value. And I don't think people realize that the town is required every so often to do a revaluation and bring all their assessed values back in line with actual values. So they can't just arbitrarily keep raising assessed values in order to bring in more tax money. So budgets are what they are, what they, what they reasonably need to be, and the assessments are what they are based on every so often. I think it's usually about every 10 years they get uh, revalued. All set, Carol? Yep. Okay. Anybody else? Andy. So <clears throat> a point of order on what you're going to do next. Are you going to retake the vote on the operating budget? The vote we took earlier was to bring it to the public hearing. Okay. This is to recommend the Warren article to be on the ballot. Um, the reason I'm asking that question is, is you have another member on the, the table. Are you going to do the same thing for the other Warren articles? Because Andy is now on the call. And the other change. ones we did, we voted on to recommend. Those weren't to be brought. OK, I'm just. Because we had already discussed the other ones. We voted on the other separate Warren articles. That's fine. I just wanted to, because Andy was here, I just wanted to see if you were going to retake the votes just to get an accurate no. number, but it's up to you. Not going to redo it. But don't we, didn't we table a motion on this to add some funds? Did we no, there was a mo decide on that? There was a $125,000 motion for the operating budget that got tabled. And it was suggested to get a petitioned warrant article. The petitioned warrant article is for 125000 And the question came up earlier is do we have to deal with that $125,000 tabled um, motion? And the answer is no. It will die at the end of this meeting. Unless, I mean, we, you want to bring it up and vote on it, that's fine, but we're just wasting our time. We've already put the money in to the approved budget with that Warren article. No. Uh, I'm good, just as long as we're procedurally all right. Yes, we are. I, I'm okay with it. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Seeing none, Mrs. Heinrich, would you please call a roll call vote on the operating budget? Yes. 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 Eight zero zero. So that's how that will appear on the warrants. Um, as far as our operating budget stuff, first of all, thank you uh, for the work you've done. Um, right now, we need to approve minutes, and then we got a couple of other housekeeping details to do. And then we might get out of here. And for those of you that are still hanging around, enjoy. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve the minutes of January 23rd? Do I have a second? Second. Any corrections, additions, or deletions? Oh, yeah, we got to do a roll call vote. 
Yes. 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 Two four. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of February fourth? Motion to approve. I have a second. Second by Chuck. Any corrections, additions, or deletions? Dan, is this the one that had the omission? Yes. Yes. Do you want to? Make that correction? I believe it's already made, isn't it? I thought that it was going to be brought up at the meeting, but maybe it's been made. I don't know. Two point three. Okay. So, oh, as amended, any other corrections, additions, or deletions? Mrs. Heinrich, would you call a roll call vote, please? Mr. Schneider? Yes. Yes. Mr. Hunter? Yes. Mr. Heinrich? Yes. And the last set of minutes? Well, the <coughs> next set of minutes is the non public session on 2 4. I have a motion to approve the minute, non public minutes of February 4th, 2020. Motion to approve. Do you have a second? Second. <coughs> Any corrections, additions, or deletions? Seeing none, Mrs. Heinrich, would you call the roll call vote, please? Ms. Lang? Yes. Mr. Hunter? I'll be happy to find you another seat. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Schneider. Yes. Mr. French. Yes. Mr. Barbini. Same. Mr. Savage. Yes. Last one. I move to seal the minutes of the non public session. Sign record, you call the vote, please. Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. Mr. Hunter. Yes. He 
he's saying yes. Go ahead and see what Okay, another thing um, everybody needs to know, on January 28th, we attempted to have a budget committee meeting. We could not get a quorum possible, and it didn't qualify as an emergency. Therefore, we had an informational session with the department heads and the superintendent and the assistant superintendents uh, on the different departments on that budget that night. There are not minutes taken at that because it was not a meeting and there were no decisions made. There is information that does not get voted on, that information that was passed out and that's what that other thing is. Okay, next on the list. We have to sign the MS-27 budget document in order for the warrant to be posted. And our signing of it signifies that we agree this is what transpired and it's good to go. If you had voted against something, that's okay, but we still need to get a minimum of seven signatures. Matt, when are you expecting it to be available? I'll have it done by 12.30. Okay, tomorrow? Yep. So anytime after 12.30 tomorrow, please go to the superintendent's office and sign the MS-27. Next is deliberative session. That is on the 3rd of March. We get a table and a front row seat. And we have a scheduled posted meeting afterwards for the purpose of changing votes on Warren articles that were changed. Whether it's the operating budget or a special Warren article. If the Warren article is not changed, the only thing we'll be doing is the minutes from tonight's meeting. If it was changed, we have the option. We can take out our recommendation and change it. We can leave it the way it is. So you know that. And filing period, that lovely time of year. Mrs. Heinrich, could you please give the correct date for filing period? So, for the four people who are up for election or re-election, if you want your position again, you got to go sign up. Please remember, you do have to be a registered voter, which we already know you are. And if you have a question as to whether it's your turn or not, you can see me or see Pat. Um, I'm just going to take a second and say thank you all for coming out. Um, this has been an interesting year, and I can honestly say the first time in 34 years on this committee, we did not have a quorum on one night. Actually, it's two nights, but because of the emergency declaration, we have a quorum tonight. Um, things happen. We don't like it when it does, but it does happen. Uh, but I appreciate your uh, hard work and vigilance to do the job we were elected to do. And thank you. Does anybody else have anything else for the Budget Committee? Uh, actually, I can tell you who they are. They're, uh, Anthony Hunter is up for election. He was appointed in January. Shelley Jacoby, Chuck Moore, and Brian Stisser. Anybody have anything else for the Budget Committee? I'd just like to make a brief statement. 
Okay, how long is a brief statement? Very brief. Okay. I, I'd just like to ask everybody, both those on the committee and those that may be listening on the cable channel or wherever else they're getting their feed, please come out to deliberative session. There's a lot of it, issues out there this year that are being hotly debated, and I don't care which side of the issue you're on. I think it's very important that everybody's voice be heard, and then we take everything into consideration and make our decisions at deliberative session. So please encourage everybody you know. A lot of times people don't go to deliberative session because it seems just run of the mill this year. It's probably more important than most years. I mean, I think it's always important, but this year particularly. So please encourage everybody you know to attend. And also, I would like to suggest to folks that uh, when you're looking at different things being put out there on Facebook or wherever um, with some things that really don't make any sense to you, check out the facts. Call the school district. Get the facts for enrollment. Get the facts for teachers. Get the facts about what people pay for their health care and the fact that there is no Cadillac health care plan anymore and it hasn't been for five years. Because there's a thing out there that says there still is. I will entertain a motion to, oh, wait a minute. Can't what? I can get them off the phone. Oh, yeah. Okay. Moved by Chuck, seconded by, by Lee. It's not debatable. We have to do a roll call vote. Yes. Yes. Lee. Yes. Jordan. Yep. Andrew Hunter. Yes. Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Please be careful on the way home. Carol and Andy, sayonara. Have a good night and stay safe.